So hi, today I wanted to show you Oracle Cloud because they have some um, always free resources. The specific resource that I'm looking at is Compute. So you can have an Oracle Cloud VM or instance running forever for free. I have been setting up my own account to buy it out. So I also wanted to share it with my community that you can have these always free resources on Oracle Cloud. So let's look at it. Now this is the Oracle Cloud. So if you go to oracle.com, this is the page that will load up. I'm specifically looking at the try OCI for free. So let's click on this link. And then as you can see, here's the free tier and how it works. So you will get $300 of USD credits, which you will have 30 days to use. In addition, you'll also have an always free services in the free tier. After those 30 days, the $300 credit go away and it will switch to pay as you go. But the always free service, again, you know, as the name suggests, you won't have to pay for that. So let's start with signing up for the Oracle Cloud account. Now here you will have to pick a region for me let's say i want to do canada go with the name and email so for me as you can see it says that i have an already registered account but for you what will happen is in the next prompt it'll ask you for your address and after that it'll also ask you for a payment method so you can enter your credit card this is what will be used once your account switches to pay as you go after 30 days so they'll also do i think a dollar um payment just to check if the credit card is valid you, of course, you get refunded as soon as that dollar is taken out from the credit card or debit card that you use. But that is kind of the sign-up process for the Oracle Cloud. And also, it'll ask for a name for your Oracle Cloud account. And you'll know what I mean by that once I try to sign in to my account. So let's do that. So after you're signed up, you'll click on sign into Oracle Cloud. And then as you can see, it asks, what is the cloud account name? So in my case, it is Rishabh Kumar 7. Click on next. Now you can enter your login details. As you can see, I have set up two factors. I'll need the code. So after your sign in, this is the dashboard that will load up. Now you can see that I have pinned two of the resources. One is the instances and the other one is virtual cloud networks, but you might not have any. So you will be able to click on this hamburger icon and go over different Oracle cloud services. And then you can pin them to your home screen dashboard here so what i will be looking at is instances so this is where all the vms are so in my case you can see i already have my oracle instance and as you can see there is a gray box that says always free so this is exactly what i was talking about there is a document available to look at always free resources so let's go over that for a quick second So this is the Oracle Cloud infrastructure documentation on the always free resources. As you can see under infrastructure, you have got two available shapes. So the micro instances with AMD processor, so VM.standard E21 micro, you can have up to two always free instances or you can have the OCI and pair A1 compute instances, which is the ARM processor. So if you go back to the instances tab, now let's click on create instance. So you can name whatever you want. I'll create this in the root compartment. Now you see how the AD1 is always free and then you can configure the placement. So this is the availability zone, but image and shape is what we really have to look at. As you can see, by default, it has selected VM.standard E21 micro. Again, if you look at the documentation, this is the one size that is eligible for the always free. You can also look, find out by looking at the gray box right next to it. You can edit this. So now here you can change the image. By default, it's using Oracle Linux 8. You can change this to be Ubuntu. So I'm going to click on that. And you can see Ubuntu OS is also always free eligible. Let's go with 2204. And you can also change the shape. So the standard E2 1 micro has one core CPU, one GB memory, and 0.48 gigabits of network bandwidth. Now, if I click on change shape, you can see there are AMD, Intel, and Ampere options. So Ampere, this is the one that was mentioned in the documentation. 
So it has one old CPU and then six GB of memory. You also get one GB per second for the network bandwidth. Again, this is the one that is also always free, but as you can see, it's only for the first 3000 old CPU hours and 18,000 GB hours per month for free for these instance types or shape. Upon calculations, this is what it comes to. So for always free tendencies, this is equivalent to four old CPUs and 24 GB of memory, which is a lot but I'm gonna stick to the AMD processor but if you want to try out you can try the ARM processor yourself Let's go back to AMD I'm just gonna hit cancel because the standard E21 micro is selected everything else can be left default now if you don't have an SSH key you can generate a new SSH key here or you can upload if you already have one so i'm gonna click on generate ssh key i'm gonna save the public key and the private key so that i can use these for my future instances now for the boot volume by default you're getting 46.6 gb but if we look at the always free then go down to the block volume and you can see you have 200 gbs available so in my case i believe i use 46 for my other instance and then i can use the default 46 or i could have split 100 gigs among the two instances that i'll have which will be free so i can allocate 100 to this one so there we go and now i'll click on create you can see that it is provisioning the instance and there is again that gray box that highlights that this instance is always free we'll wait for the infrastructure to be provisioned okay so the instance as you can see is in the running state this is the public ip available to us but if this is your first time setting up an instance in oracle cloud you will have to edit the network settings so that you can ssh into these instances i have already done that so if you click on virtual cloud network through the hamburger menu click on the default virtual network click on the subnet here you'll see the default security list click on that now here you can see that the traffic on port 22 is allowed from all of the sources which is 0.0.0 slash 0, .0, .0, 0. Port 22 is what is used for SSH but also I want to make sure that there is a rule for port 80 so that if you're running you know your website or Nginx you are able to visit that on port 80. So security wise we are looking good when it comes to our network settings. So now what I can do is SSH into our newly created instance. To do that, let's copy the IP address and I'm going to open a terminal window. Now, my key is in the downloads folder. So I'm going to go into downloads and then the first thing you'll need to do is change the permissions on the key. So sudo chmod 400 and then I know the key name starts with SSH key. We'll ask you for the password. This is your machine password. So whatever you use to log in into your laptop or PC, you'll use that here. This is because I used sudo. Now I can use the SSH command. So SSH-I will be using the key here. And then the username is going to be Ubuntu at the IP address of our machine. It'll ask if you want to add this new host. I'll say yes. And as you can see, we are SSH into our Ubuntu instance. So this was the instance name uh, within our Oracle cloud. Now, a few things I like to do is update the packages in my new instance. And now we can do sudo apt-get upgrade-y. Okay, so our update has been completed. Now, what I can do is install Nginx. Enter Y if we want to continue. Okay, so that, that has installed Nginx. Now we can look at the status of the Nginx service, if it's running or not, by using systemctl. So systemctl status Nginx. And as you can see, it is running. Now let's go back to our Oracle Cloud, copy the IP address, paste it in the browser. And as you can see, it says host not found. This might be an issue on my VPN. Let's see what's going on. So my laptop does have a VPN running. So that might be causing this issue. Let me quickly check some of the settings on my machine here. And now that if I refresh, so this 
could also be an issue with the firewall on so my vpn is disconnected so this now you can see it is not doing the host not found but rather uh can't read this can't reach this page issue so this could be because of the firewall on our instance itself so let's look let's allow nginx http on our instance so if we go back to our ubuntu instance you can do Okay, so something is wrong with my instance, I guess, because I'm trying to type in my terminal, but it seems disconnected. So let me disclose this terminal window, go back to my Oracle Cloud and refresh this and see if there is an ongoing issue with the instance. It doesn't seem like it. So let's open new terminal window and then SSH into the instance again. Okay. Now let's do a sudo ufw allow nginx http as you can see it updated the rules now let's try going back to the public ip of the instance here and still nothing so we can also try checking the ufw status um, by typing in sudo ufw status and as you can see the status is inactive but let's try enabling um the ufw firewall and see if that helps now let's see the status and as you can see that it is active and it allows um internet http both for v6 now let's go back to our browser see if it did anything it doesn't look like and since i am running out of options i guess a quick google search doesn't hurt so we could search for something like why or how to open port 80 for an oracle instance um, so this is live troubleshooting, I guess. So this is live troubleshooting, but I did found a link to the official kind of documentation. So let's go over it quickly. So yeah, uh, we have um, created the port 80 rule in the VCN, which is the virtual cloud network. That looks right. There we go. The one two firewall is disabled by default. However, you still need to update your IP tables and configuration to allow HTTP traffic, which we saw the UFW was inactive and we enabled it but official oracle doc says that yes um the ufw will be disabled but you still have to update the ip tables which is this command so this is exactly i'm guessing what will fix our issue now so i'm gonna hit enter and now let's go back to our browser go back here and do a refresh and there we go we have the Nginx default page loaded and ready. Now you can edit this HTML page by going to var www.html and do ls-l. There is a default in index.nginxdebian.html. So you could use something like nano or vim to edit this. Now instead of saying welcome to Nginx, let me change that to welcome to Nginx on Oracle Cloud. This is by Risha. Let's do Command X. Sorry, let's do Control X. Save this. And now we can restart our Nginx service. Here we go. Let's head back to our browser, do a refresh, and you can see the HTML was updated. Great. So yeah, that is how you can sign up for an Oracle Cloud account and set up an always free VM. Again, a link to the documentation on always free resources. So go through the list in detail to figure out if you will be incurring any charges. For the instance, I told you the specific type that are included. Also, how much of the block volume size is covered in the free tier but yeah i hope this video was helpful and i'll see you in the next one peace